Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate the iterated integral by changing it from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. In this particular problem, we've been given the iterated integral, the integral from negative 3 to positive 3, of the integral from 0 to square root of 9 minus x squared, of sine of the quantity x squared plus y squared dy dx. And as you can see, this iterated integral is given in Cartesian coordinates because we've got x and y here. We need to evaluate it by changing it to polar coordinates, which of course will put the whole thing in terms of r and theta. So there's a couple things we're going to need to pay attention to. Obviously the function itself here, sine of x squared plus y squared, we're going to need to change that to polar coordinates. We're going to need to deal with dy dx here, and we're going to need to change our limits of integration on both integrals. So let's tackle one piece at a time. If we start with our limits of integration, the first thing we notice is that we'll be integrating first with respect to y, then with respect to x, because dy is on the inside here. Because of that, we know that this inner integral has limits of integration that reference y. So this is telling us that we're going to evaluate with respect to y from y equals 0 to y equals square root of 9 minus x squared. If we go ahead and set y equal to square root of 9 minus x squared, we can do some work with this equation here to make it a more recognizable equation to us. So the way that we'll do that is we'll square both sides and we'll get y squared equals 9 minus x squared. If we then add x squared to both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals 9, and we can tell right away that this is the equation of a circle with radius 3. If we go ahead and sketch the circle with radius 3 on a Cartesian coordinate system, so we'll just draw our axes here and we'll call this x and y, and we don't need to make this real accurate, but if we say that this is our circle, and if we pretend that it has radius 3, so we call this point here 3 and this point here 3, then this is our circle with radius 3. What we can tell from our iterated integral is that we know this inner integral has limits of integration that relate to y. Well, this is telling us that the lowest value that y can attain is 0. So we're not going to consider area below the line y equals 0 here. Then it's telling us that the upper limit of integration for y, the highest we can go for y, is bounded by this equation here for the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. So the upper limit of integration for y is going to be this circle right here. So, so far, it's the half circle. Then if we look at our outer integral, which has limits of integration that relate to x, right, because we have, we're integrating first with respect to y, then with respect to x, because dx here is on the outside, this outside integral relates to x. So it's telling us that the leftmost value x can attain is negative 3, and that the rightmost value x can attain is positive 3. And that's all the way at these endpoints here, negative 3 to positive 3. So the x values aren't limiting the area that we're evaluating any further than the limits of integration for y were before. If it had said negative 2 to positive 2, then we would have only had this region here, for example. But because it's negative 3 to positive 3, we're looking at the entire half circle that is above the y-axis. So if we want to change these to polar coordinates, if we now pretend that this is a polar coordinate system and we get rid of here x and y, and this is just a polar coordinate system with the circle graphed here, and we're only interested in this semicircle, then we need limits of integration for r and theta. Well, first of all, for r, we know that the lowest value r can attain is 0 right here at the origin. Remember, r in the polar coordinate system is the distance away from the origin. Well, r can be right at the origin here, not out at any distance at all from the origin, or it can be as far as 3 units away from the origin. It can come out 3 units here if it goes in this direction. This is also 3 units if it goes in this direction. This is also 3 units. The farthest r can get away from the origin is 3. So our upper limit of integration for r is 3, and our lower limit of integration is 0. So let's go ahead and say that r will be from 0 to 3. Then when we look at our limits of integration for theta, remember that in a polar coordinate system you start at the angle here 0, and as you work your way counterclockwise around the polar axis, you hit here pi over 2, and then pi, and then 3 pi over 2 before you complete the full circle and get back to 2 pi here. 
Well, since we're only dealing with the half circle that's above the y-axis, you can see that we can start at the angle zero, that's the lowest value that theta can attain, and as it goes around here, it's gonna stop here right at pi. That is the largest angle that theta can attain. If we were talking about the full circle, then we would do zero all the way to two pi, but since we're only talking about the half circle based on the limits of integration we were given, we know that the limits of integration for theta are zero to pi. So that's gonna take care of our limits of integration. Now let's deal with the rest of our integral here and let's go ahead and start writing out the, the details. So when you're dealing with a double polar integral, your outer integral is always gonna be in terms of theta. So we need our limits of integration for theta, zero to pi. Then we have the inner integral, which is always gonna be related to r, and we know that r goes from zero to three. Now we have our function here inside. We're gonna have sine of x squared plus y squared. Well, if we wanna change this into polar coordinates, remember that we can use this conversion formula, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. That along with x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta are the three formulas that we normally use to convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. In this case, we can see that we have x squared plus y squared inside of our sine function here. We can just make the direct substitution for r squared. So we're going to get sine of r squared. And then in order to convert dy dx into polar coordinates, we're going to replace that always with r dr d theta. And yes, it's important that you have this extra r in here. If you have dy dx, you're always going to replace that with r dr d theta. So now you can see we have removed all of the references to x and y in our iterated integral here, and everything's in terms of r and theta. That means we've successfully converted it to polar coordinates, and now all we need to do is evaluate this integral. We can go ahead and use u substitution with u equals r squared to evaluate it. We'll take the derivative of u and get du. du is going to be equal to 2r dr. When we take the derivative of r squared, we get 2r and then we add that dr onto it. Notice that we have here in our iterated integral r dr, and we have r dr here. Well, if we just divide both sides by two, divide both sides of this equation here by two, we'll get du over two equals r dr. Now we can substitute du over two for r dr here into our equation. When we do that, we're gonna get the integral from zero to pi, the integral from zero to three, of sine of u, and then here we're substituting for r dr, du over two, and then of course we have this d theta here. Now this two that's in the denominator under the du, that's the same thing as one half obviously, so we can just pull this one half out in front here and get rid of it there so that we can integrate one half sine of u. When we do that, when we integrate one half sine of u, Remember that the integral of sine is negative cosine, so what we'll get is negative one-half times cosine of u. We can go ahead and back substitute for u. Remember that u is r squared, so we'll get cosine of r squared, and we're gonna be evaluating that on the interval zero to three. Now we need to evaluate zero to three. We'll plug that in for r, and then when we simplify this, then we'll go ahead and integrate with respect to theta. So plugging in our limits of integration, we'll start with three. We'll get negative one half times cosine of r squared. We plug in three, we get nine, so we'll get cosine of nine. Then we're gonna subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. So minus a negative one half will just be a positive one half of cosine of zero. Well, we know that cosine of zero is equal to one. One times one half is just one, so we can go ahead and ignore this cosine of zero here, and then we just have d theta. Now we can integrate with respect to theta, and when we do that, we'll get negative one half cosine of nine, and then we'll multiply this whole thing here by theta plus one half times theta, and we'll be evaluating that on the interval zero to pi. We'll plug pi in first and we'll get negative pi over two cosine of nine. Instead of adding pi here at the end, I put it in the front so that it wouldn't look like cosine of nine pi. So then we have plus one half times pi is pi over two. 
and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. Well, obviously you can see we're just gonna be multiplying by zero here and zero here, so that's gonna turn out to be zero and we don't have to consider it. Now this would be our final answer, except that we can go ahead and factor out pi over two. So we'll say pi over two times, and instead of leading with a negative sign here inside the parentheses, let's go ahead and lead with a positive. So we've got pi over two times one for this term, one, and then we'll follow with the negative sign, so we'll get minus cosine of nine. And that's it, that's our final answer. This gives us the area of this half circle which we found by converting the given iterated integral to polar coordinates. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.